Te Nā Koutou Katoa. Our time in Antarctica has almost come to an end, but it's been cool. From the seals to the sea spiders, the penguins, kulus, with a view, and the people who make up Scott Base. There is one thing I have to do before I leave. And that's to check out Sir Edmund Hillary's hut. The Kiwi legend who was the first to climb Mount Everest, who started Scott Base, and the first to get to the South Pole in a motor vehicle. Come with me and we'll go check it out. Kia ora, Sonny. Kia ora, how are you? Welcome to Hillary's Hut. Thank you very much. Come on in. Awesome. Oh, wow. And so it was the first building built here at Scott Base in 1957. It's the birthplace of New Zealand's Antarctic science. So Edmund Hillary was, uh, was the leader of the expedition, and so we named the building after him. After the man himself. Yeah, the man. OK, let me guess. The radio route. A hundred percent correct, Sonny. <laughs> they use the radios to talk out to the fields, but also back to New Zealand. So this is Sir Ed's bedroom. Wow. Very tight space. Yeah, yeah. It's a very humble room. I also heard that you met Sir Edmund Hillary. I don't know who told you that, but, <laughs> but you're correct. So uh, I, I spent a wonderful time at Cape Royds in Antarctica under a canvas tent having a cup of tea with Sir Ed and we chatted about his uh, expeditions and uh, it was one of the highlights of my life. I can see that you and your team have conserved this place really, really well, but I understand that that's a really big job to do. It is a very big job with the harsh environment, blowing winds, scoria. It's very hard on the buildings and the artefact collections within. We go out typically when we're doing the large conservation projects for three months of the year. And we have to live in tents in very cold weather. And we have to toilet in buckets. Typically we work long hours in very harsh conditions. Now we travel back in time even further in a Haglin to a hut which has been here since 1911. This place belonged to one of the most famous explorers, Robert Falcon Scott, who took an adventurous trip to the South Pole from which he never returned. This is the base of some of the earliest research in the Antarctic and home to science in Te Tiri o te Moana. This definitely takes you back in time. You can still see, you know, some of their socks and what they slept on. It's almost like there were people here yesterday, then they dropped everything and they walked out the door. I don't even understand how they even could survive out here because it's so cold. They must have just been hearty airs. Amazing, amazing people. This hut belongs to another famous Antarctic explorer, Ernest Shackleton, who is well known for leading his men through one of the greatest survival stories ever. What people don't know about Ernest is that he was an incredible innovator too. Oh wow, <laughs> that's the wheel of the first vehicle that was ever brought down here to Antarctica. Made out of wood and metal, amazing. There's over 6,000 historic pieces in this room. It makes this place a real taonga, to have everything preserved and frozen in time. Not only were Scott and Shackleton explorers, they were also cutting edge scientists too. Their work in these huts has helped climate scientists today, like Fiona. Tēnā koe Fiona. Now I hear that you lead the Antarctica New Zealand science team. So that means that you're across all the research that happens here? Yeah, that's right, Sonny. New Zealand scientists are playing a huge role in understanding what's happening here in Antarctica, particularly in relation to climate change. Right now, we're standing on sea ice, which is the frozen ocean. Mm -hmm. And in the distance over there, you can see ice on the land, which is the Antarctic ice sheet. If that ice ends up in the ocean, that's what's going to cause global sea levels to rise. What could cause that to happen? It's us humans. So as we burn fossil fuels, we end up with more and more greenhouse gases in our atmosphere. And those gases act like a blanket around the Earth, causing our atmosphere to warm up. As temperatures increase, ice starts to melt. 
And if we lose the ice sheet, that's what will contribute to sea level rise. Our scientists are working hard to try to understand how quickly that might happen. We know that there are about 150 million people around the world who live within one metre of current sea levels. But we might not think that a small increase in sea level rise has much impact, but in actual fact, it will affect a lot of people. It is not hard to see why all these amazing people love this magical place, the last great wilderness and the least understood continent on Earth. I don't know anywhere else in the world where you can just come sit down. You're surrounded by ice and snow. It's quiet. These animals have no fear and they just approach you. As a scientist, there really is no better place. It's one of the few untouched or relatively untouched places in the world to try to understand animal behavior. The cold, the ice, the wildlife is just extraordinary. The marine animals here are like nowhere else on Earth, and the diving here is like nowhere yeah. else on Earth. I love it. I really enjoy seeing the animals and working with the animals. It's beautiful. I love the challenge. I love coming here, dealing with the weather, not being able to have a shower for a month, pooing in a bucket, making the science work. I love the fact that everything is always going wrong, as a team of scientists, I love how we can come together and we can solve all those problems. And I guess the big question that I'm asking is, how do we limit climate change and protect Antarctica? I think the most important thing to do is to talk about climate change and ask really good questions. Why are things changing? Be curious about the environment and try to learn more about it. You might become a scientist or you might design some new technology that can really help make a difference riding a bike instead of taking a car, or recycling your cups, or not using too much water. Turn off your lights, unplug your electronics. Just try to reduce the amount of energy you use. All those little things, if everybody does that, then collectively we have a big influence on the health of the planet. Sir Edmund Hillary once said, people do not decide to become extraordinary, they decide to accomplish extraordinary things. Tamariki of Aotearoa, we've been given a challenge, or wero, to protect Te Tiri o Te Moana, Antarctica. It is our time to accomplish something extraordinary by protecting and saving this town. Nā reira, kia kaha tātou ki te manaaki, ki te tiaki, i tēnei whenua mauriora. Ngā tiro mihi, New Zealand on air. 